Lara. Uh, resuming debate, uh, the Honourable Member for Renfrew, uh, Renfrew Nipissing Pembroke. Thank you, Madam Speaker. It, it is with the support and respect of the people of my riding of Renfrew Nipissing Pembroke that I rise today once again to speak in support of this legislation that will finally scrap the long gun registry. I'm pleased to confirm to this House that scrapping the Liberal long gun registry is the number one topic of discussion when I'm out and about in various public engagements that I'm invited to attend. My constituents follow the progress of this legislation very closely. They're disgusted by the, the cynical, manipulative ploys of the opposition. And my constituents assure me they will never in their lifetimes support those parties with their not-so-hidden agenda to reintroduce the registry. In my writing, demonstrations against the Liberal Long Gun Registry were not occupied by young people being manipulated by radicals funded by foreign interests. Mr. Speaker, these demonstrations were held by middle-aged firearms owners whose first reflex is to respect the laws of the land, whose parents and their parents before them built this great nation. The political alienation of rural Canadians by the Liberals was a far greater loss than the billion dollars plus which has been wasted on an experiment in social engineering an experiment which backfired on the Liberal Party and helped reduce them to the fringe status in Canadian politics they enjoy today. The creation by the Liberals of a new criminal class, rural farm, firearms owners, was the ultimate triumph of the negative political politics which thoughtful Canadians rejected and which they re in the same way that they rejected the Liberal long gun registry. This may be the worst, most enduring product that, of the gun registry, the culture war. When it comes to the gun issue, my constituents all know my stand. I'm against it, and I will never quit fighting until it's gone. Until now, however, I've only made reference to it as the liberal long gun registry which means registering all serial numbers on guns owned by law-abiding citizens. But there was much more. As we all know, brave Canadians sacrificed lives in two world wars and many conflicts. It, most recently, Afghanistan, to ensure that we have a free and democratic society, as well as the rule book laid out that society would be run. That rule book is the Constitution of Canada. However, when Liberal Minister Alan Rock brought in Bill C-68, the original legislation using deception and flawed RCMP data, his Liberal Party failed to tell the public that hidden in his so-called gun bill were 11 unconstitutional sections that deny the rights and freedoms guaranteed to us by our Constitution. Some argue these intentional rights and freedoms violations gave the registry the same legal authority as the War Measures Act, since when the War Measures Act is invoked, all civil rights and freedoms are suspended. But we're not at war here, are we? Is this the culture war that the left is always trying to incite? The reality of this blatant assault on the Canadian Constitution can only be stopped by Bill C-19. Yet the left-wing parties are fighting to keep this kind of legislation on the books, vowing never to rescind it. They've promised to keep fighting every attempt by our government to end it and then to reintroduce it if they ever get the chance. Nevertheless, our Constitution is the set of rules that our government abides by because they represent the supreme laws of the nation. When you see the left-wing parties demanding the gun registry stays, remember that they're demanding an outright repudiation of the Canadian Constitution as well as a blatantly unconstitutional denial of our civil rights and freedoms. These violations prove that the long gun registry was never about crime reduction. 
It was about giving the Liberal government the power to seize Canadian property without process. Now, the 11 violations constituents cite are as follows. One, Bill C-68, from which the long gun registry emanated, denies the constitutional right to possess private chattel property by allowing the police to confiscate the private property without the due process of law, and without the, the due process of law or fair and just and timely compensation, and that's CFA section 102.1 and 102 number four. This section also provides for the future confiscation of any and all personal property class as being prohibited upon the death of the owner without monetary compensation of any kind. The second one is that Bill C-68 denied the constitutional right to be secure against unreasonable search and seizure by forcing citizens to allow the police into their homes to search and seize without a warrant, even if no known crime was suspected. They have to allow the, the search or face arrest. And that could only be challenged, uh, and you can only challenge the legality of search after the fact. And that's CFA section 102 to 4, 104, and criminal code amendment section 11704 and 1. The third uh, aspect cited was Bill C-68 denies the constitutional right against self-incrimination, the right to remain silent, while allowing police to threaten criminal charges. CFA Section 103 and 113, if you don't assist them to search and uh, go through your home and belongings, the relevant enforcement of the Act, its regulations, or Part 111 of the Criminal Code CFA Section 103. The fourth item they cite from the uh, violations of the Constitution is that uh, C-68 denied the constitutional right to be presumed innocent until proven guilty by saying the burden of proof is on you. Uh, that's reverse onus. And that's CFA Section 75.3, Criminal Code Amendment, Section 117.11. And this section alone destroyed the very foundation upon which our entire legal justice system is predicated. The fifth violation was that it denied your constitutional right to consult legal counsel before consenting to surprise police inspections or warrantless searches of your home, CFA section 103 and 113. The sixth violation, it denied your constitutional right to privacy by authorizing police to conduct warrantless searches of your home at any time, even if you don't own a firearm and that's CFA section 1027-104. Bill C-68 denied the constitutional right to freedom of association by allowing the government to prohibit us from owning a firearm if we're an associate of someone who is already prohibited from owning a firearm, and that's criminal code amendment section 117.011-1B. The eighth violation is that it denied our constitutional right to be represented by an MP by allowing the Justice Minister to make unilateral regulations that modify the criminal code as he sees fit using orders in council without ever having to go through either the House of Parliament and that's CF, CFA section 117A to 5, uh, section 119.6, part 11 of the criminal code, and that provision makes the Justice Minister a law unto himself. Bill C-68 denied the Aboriginals their constitutional right to equal treatment under the law by allowing the government to unilaterally adapt, otherwise change any provision of the Act as it applies to Native people. And that's CFA Section 177U, all without consulting the House of Parliament. And that's CFA Section 119.6. Uh, the tenth violation is that C-68 allowed the Justice Minister to create civilian police as opposed to properly trained officers dedicated to law enforcement, uh, CFA Section 101. This provision leaves the door wide open for a future creation of unaccountable government forces and or uh, different units. And the eleventh violation is that it allowed for both military and foreign enforcement as well, but with no other part of the Canadian Criminal Code enforceable by the military, especially a foreign military, uh, and we're wondering why that one had to be put in. The truth is, the provision was included to legitimize the future presence of 
potentially foreign troops on the land, but why would Canada ever need foreign troops uh, enforcing Canadian gun laws? So that I, I, I must uh, interrupt the honourable member's time is up, but she, uh, in response to questions, I'm sure will be able to add to her comment.